back to our discussion. Uh, we are now in the part three of the depreciation series. And let's start with the double declining balance method. Let's go straight to our problem. As promised, we will not bore you with uh, the lengthy theories. So Bangon Company purchased a factory equipment uh, in the service, January 1, 2020. Cost, 1,550,000. Useful life, five years. Method, double declining balance. Residual value, 50,000. And our task is to prepare a depreciation table. Okay. The precision table. So let's start. It is called double declining because we simply double the straight line rate. So to get the straight line rate, it's just one, a constant or 100% divided by five years. So that's 100% divided by five years, which is the useful life that's 20 years. Then we double it, so our double declining rate, or our fixed rate, sorry, is 40%. So let's construct our depreciation table. If, if you will observe, here in 2020, our depreciable base, depreciation base, is the cost, the purchase price, total purchase price, and not the depreciable cost, which is costless salvage value. So that's the one difference uh, of the double declining balance versus our straight line method, uh, output method, and the, the SYD, which we previously discussed. Okay. To get the most out of this problem, again, um, the same concept is used in the 150% uh, balance. So this is double declining, so that's 200% or times two. The same concept is applied to 100%, 150% declining balance. So let's go back to our problem. In 2020, our depreciation base is 1,550,000, which is the cost times the double declining rate, 40%, so you will have a depreciation of 620,000. So since it's first year, the accumulated depreciation is equal to the depreciation expense for the year. So our new carrying amount now is 1,950,000, which is 1,550 less 620,000. For 2021, so we will now use the carry, new carrying amount, which is 930, times our fixed rate of 40%, our depreciation is 372. So like our sum of the year's digit, the double declining balance is also part of the accelerated method, wherein uh, higher depreciation expense are charged in the early part of the useful life of the asset. So it's 372 now, lower than our first year depreciation. So our accumulated depreciation for 2021 is now 620 plus 372. So 992, our new carrying amount now is 558,000. So the same in 2022, 558 here, then that's our base times 40%. Depreciation, two to three, as expected with accelerated method, is lower than the previous year. So our accumulated depreciation now is 125, 1,215,200. So our new carrying amount is 334, 800. So 2023 likewise, the same. The carrying amount here times 40% to get the depreciation of 133,920,000. Nine okay. Our uh, estimated life for this property or for this equipment is five years. 
So in the fifth year, there's a slight uh, change. Remember, in the double declining balance, at first we disregard the salvage value. So this time, in 2024, remember that at the end of the life of the asset, its carrying amount would be equal to its salvage value. So that means our total depreciation here and the accumulated depreciation should only be equal to 1,500,000 or the total depreciable amount, which is 1,550 less 50,000. So our total depreciation for the uh, over the life of the asset is should be 1,500,000. So in 2024, our depreciation should be the, remain, the carrying amount for 2023 less the 50,000. Therefore, our depreciation is 100, uh, 150,880. This applies only, this computation only applies in the last year of uh, the life of the, asset, the equipment. So our total accumulated. Next, we're going to discuss the composite method. The reason why companies are using composite method is that they find it uh, time consuming to compute individual depreciation. So they group their assets and use a composite rate to depreciate all of their assets. So assets are treated, depreciable assets are treated as one. They also have one accumulated depreciation for all of these assets. Let's dive into our problem. So this Covita company used the composite method to depreciate all of its assets at 25%. Beginning of the year, 5 million. Accumulated depreciation, 3 million. Purchased equipment for the year, 3 million. Sold equipment for the year, 1 million. And it was sold for 200,000, though its residual value is 100,000. Two issues here that we're going to solve. We have to compute for the depreciation for 2020 and we have to prepare a journal entry on the recognition of this 1 million asset that was sold in December, end of 2020. Start. So again, based on our data, total cost of our asset, 5 million, standing balance for the year. Then we acquired 3 million. Then we dispose asset for 1 million, the cost of the asset disposed. So the remaining cost on December 31, 2020 is 7 million. So this will be the base for computing the depreciation for the year. So it's 7 million times 25%, it's 1,700,000. So again, just like the double declining uh, balance method, depreciation is based on cost, we multiply it by cost. So we disregard the 3 million accumulated depreciation in this case. So it's remaining cost times composite rate 25%. So our depreciation for the year is 1,750,000. Okay, so what would be our journal entry on the disposal? So, we received cash, 200,000, although its receivable value is 100,000. So you record what we received, 200,000. The cost of the equipment disposed is 1 million. So credit, equipment, 1 million. Under the composite method, no gain or loss is recognized on the, the recognition of an asset. So no gain or loss is recognized because the difference is charge to accumulated depreciation. So the difference of 800,000 is debit accumulated 
depreciation. Another depreciation topic. This time, it's change in method. Sometimes the company may decide to change if they find that the depreciation they are method, the depreciation method they are using is not appropriate. Uh, depreciation method that they are using with in their particular assets, or sometimes it could be part of their depreciation policy where the earlier part has a different depreciation method and the later part of the asset has also a different depreciation method that is being used. So let's discuss change in method. Exmo company purchased an equipment on January 1, 2018, 8 million, five years life. It's part of their depreciation policy that first two years, 200 double, double declining, Balance, then switch to straight line for three, four, five years. In the third, fourth, and fifth year. Question is, how much is the accumulated depreciation for 2020 if the asset is purchased on January 1, 2018? Again, the requirement is accumulated depreciation. So you have this rule. Change in depreciation method is accounted for as a change in accounting estimate and therefore should be currently treated currently and prospectively, meaning we will not be touching uh, the first two years of uh, the depreciation that has been done using the double declining. We will discuss later in our uh, succeeding videos about this prospective and retroactive term terminologies. For now, let's proceed with our problem. So, we compute the double declining rate by the, uh, multiplying the straight line rate by two. So 100% divided by five years useful life, that's 20%. So our fixed rate is 40%. So for the first two years, we purchased the equipment on 2018. So our first year depreciation is 3,200,000, which is 8 million times 40%. For 2019, it's 1920 from 4,800 times 40%. This 4,800,000 year is the carrying amount. 8 million less depreciation for 2018. You have 48. So 48 times 40%. So you have 1,920,000. So our total accumulated depreciation is 5,120,000 prior to the change in the depreciation method that we will be using. So in 2020, we will use straight line. So our carrying amount now is 8 million less 5,120,000. So that's 2,880,000 divided by three years, the remaining life of the asset. So you will get 960,000. Again, this 960,000 is 8 million less 5,120. So that's uh, 2,880,000. 2,880,000 divided by three years, that's 960. So that's what we do when we change in uh, the depreciation uh, method that we are using. So first, compute for the carrying amount of the asset prior to the change. Then divide the, the carrying amount by the remaining life of the asset. So our accumulated depreciation for December 31, 2020 is now 6,080,000. The 5120 from double declining plus the 960 using the straight line method. So thank you very much for watching and hope to see you guys um, following us and for more of our accounting tutorials, engineering, and mathematics. Thank you very much.